You know the old saying, good things come to those who wait. Well, in the Toyota Tundra's case, we've been waiting 15 long years for Toyota to finally reveal the next generation Tundra. And as you can see today, the day has finally come. I'm just outside of Plano, Texas at the Comerica Center with the all new third generation 2022 Tundra. As you can see, it's got a completely new look on the outside, on the inside, it's riding on a new platform. It's got new powertrains under the hood, including a new hybrid. So you guys have been waiting for a long time. So have we, let's finally take Take a first look at this all new 2022 Tundra. So when you've been waiting 15 years for an all new version, you're gonna bet that the all new truck is gonna look entirely different versus the previous generation. Remember, the previous generation came out back in 2007. I was in high school to put that into perspective. 15 years is a long time. And as you can see, the design of the all new third generation Tundra is very, very different. Of course, let's start with this particular model here. This is the top of the spec TRD Pro version, just like the previous generation. Toyota is actually gonna offer this new truck in six different trims. I'm gonna take you, uh, on an ex a tour of all the trims later on in the video, but I'll first focus on this truck when I talk about the front fascia, because as you can see, this looks very similar to the one that was leaked by Toyota, of course, a couple months ago. The TRD Pro has a unique specific grill. The grill is massive. It's going, of course, with the theme of trucks and having much larger grills. You can see Toyota is spelled out here only on the TRD Pro version that kind of goes with their heritage. The TRD Pro model also is the model that's over 80 inches wide. So now we have these uh, light clearance uh, accents in the grill, which again is required because the vehicle is over 80 inches. The other trims aren't quite as wide, so they won't get that. And the cool thing about the TRD is you have these really interesting full LED headlights with, as you can see, a dynamic turn signal. I was not expecting to find that. This is the LED daytime running light. You have these LED low and high beams and the upper trims, including the TRD, will get these LED fog lights down here in the front part of the bumper. And if you guys look over here, there's actually an LED off-road light bar. This light bar here only comes on when you guys have the vehicle's high beams on. If you have on the high beams, it's gonna switch off the fog lights. So you can't actually blind people with all these lights. That's of course a federal regulation. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the design. I think the TRD Pro is definitely my favorite in terms of the look. Uh, it definitely looks a lot better in person versus in the photos. You can really tell how aggressive uh, this truck is. Now, in terms of underneath the truck, you can see the TRD Pro also comes with this front skid plate. That's very much a throwback to the previous generation. And in terms of the ground clearance, the TRD Pro has a two and a half inch lift in the front, a one inch lift in the back because it has those Fox racing shocks. Toyota didn't disclose the actual ground clearance figures just yet, but the old one had around 10 inches of ground clearance. It looks like this one apparently has roughly the same, although Toyota did confirm that this truck is, about, is a little bit lower this year to help with aerodynamics. Now to switch things up, I wanna show you guys the Platinum trim, and this one is also the iForce Max. Now the TRD Pro, you can't necessarily tell it's the hybrid because it doesn't have the Toyota logo in the front, instead it just spells out Toyota. But because this is the hybrid and we have the traditional front end, you can see the logo has a blue accent behind it. So that lets people know that you've got the hybrid version. And on the hood, there's also an iForce Max that's on the actual, on both sides of the hood to let people know that this is the hybrid version. But I like how Toyota didn't actually put any hybrid badges. They're kind of going the same route as Ford with their power boost feature or power boost engine where it doesn't actually have hybrid badges. And you can see with the platinum version, you do have a unique specific grill with more shiny or chrome silver accents, which I also like. The headlights are pretty similar, but you probably notice this little area right here underneath the headlight. This is actually a functional opening here. Toyota said that they wanted to make sure there were no fake vents and it really makes the styling of this truck look a lot more authentic and a lot more aggressive. So the Tundra, is a really big truck. This is Toyota's full-size truck, in case you guys forgot. They make the Tacoma and the Tundra. And let's start, of course, with the side profile of this model here. This is technically the lowest trim they have here to show us. Technically, the base trim is SR. This is an SR5 with the TRD Sport Package, a very uh, popular package for a lot of buyers who tend to choose this truck. And I'm also standing by the Crew Max version. So you have the full full-size doors, the shorter bed, and the TRD Sport gives you these 20 inch black specific TRD wheels with more of a, a road specific tire. These are Yokohama Geolander uh, tire looks like. And Toyota says for the TRD Sport, they also gave it a TRD Sport suspension and they lowered it slightly. So this is not the one that you're gonna want to go off-roading. They have a TRD off-road package for that. So now let's look at the side profile of the TRD Pro version. And this is the one that I first showed you in the intro. In typical fashion with the TRD Pro models, this is the most off-road capable version. So you're gonna have these really aggressive 
18 inch black BBS forged wheels. You can see this is, these are specific to the TRD Pro. It also includes an extra set of extra ground clearance because of those Fox racing shocks. It actually increases the ground clearance by about two and a half inches versus the standard model. And you can see the uh, coils are actually red painted, which looks pretty good from the outside. And this material here you can see is called technical camo. This is included on the TRD Pro versions. Toyota actually says that the production model, this is a very early prototype, will have the same material in the front grille as well on the lower portion, which this one didn't have. It really gives the truck a very aggressive look. I really appreciate the design of it. And you can see all the chrome that you found on like the platinum on, on the 1794, it's all been blacked out. So the mirrors here are blacked out. You have this black a pillar uh, here on both sides of the truck, which really kind of give it an interesting look. And you can still get it in the cab configurations that a lot of buyers want. This is the Crew Max. So this is the four full size doors. Toyota also offers a double cab configuration. And the new addition this year is this one here has the five and a half foot bed, but Toyota now will offer a six and a half foot bed on the Crew Max. So that's a new addition. I think a lot of buyers are gonna appreciate because you're gonna have a slightly more usable bed which I think is going to be appreciated for a lot of truck buyers who actually plan to put a lot of stuff in the bed. So if you're looking for a more luxury oriented trim with a Western twist, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the 1794 edition. And this sits at the very top of the trim structure, right up there, of course, with the Platinum and the TRD Pro. Now I wanna point out, of course, the differences with the 1794. This one here has a 20 inch TRD specific wheels. It also has some all-terrain tires on it, although it doesn't have the Fox racing shocks with the lift kit. Although the wheels definitely look good. It makes this truck look a lot better versus chrome wheels. You can see the fender flares here have a slightly different kind of gray finish uh, instead of that texturized look with the technical camo. And if you guys like chrome, this is the trim you're gonna wanna look at. You have chrome mirror caps, you have chrome along the side rocker panels, you have chrome on the door handles, chrome along the window trim. And this is also the, the truck that has the longer bed. So we have the Crew Max here, which is the four full size doors, and we have the six and a half foot bed. This is a new addition this year, and it really makes the bed a lot more usable if you guys actually plan to haul around stuff in your Tundra. So if you're looking for the Goldilocks trim within the Tundra lineup, the Limited is probably the one you're gonna wanna look at. And this one here in this red has the TRD off-road package, which is a very popular option for a lot of customers. Now, of course, being the Limited trim, you do have some chrome similar to the 1794. You have the chrome on the door handles, chrome on the window trim, but no chrome on the mirrors, which I like. The wheels, these are the 20 inch TRD specific wheels that you also saw in the 1794. They're wrapped in all-terrain tires. This one here also looks like it has a little more ground clearance because of that, but if you guys want even more ground clearance, Toyota will offer up to 115 different accessories, including a three inch factory lift kit. So you can actually have the dealer install a three inch additional lift as part of a dealer accessory. These running boards here uh, on the side are also part of an accessory, which is gonna be great for those of you who are shorter, especially if you decided to actually lift your truck. And let's, so let's take a look at the rear of this truck. This one here is the Crew Max with the shorter five and a half foot bed. This is a very popular configuration. You can see there's also a TRD off-road badge here on the side. And let's talk about the rear design of the new Tundra because this is a very controversial look when I first saw it in pictures. In person, I think it looks fantastic. I love the design of the taillights with these three vertical elements. And you can see they're also sequential LED turn signals, just like in the front, you also get it back here. And the one thing Toyota also wanted to point out, if you look here at the uh, body, um, at the flush mounts between the bumper and the body, they're extremely tight. Most trucks, you can basically get a finger in between the tail light and the actual bumper. Toyota wanted to close everything up and make the gap extra tight to give this truck a much more premium look. And I think they've definitely succeeded. This is the only truck on the market that I've seen uh, with that specific detail with the body lines. Now, in terms of the actual uh, bed, you can see they have Tundra stamped in the back. Um, different models like the TRD Pro will say TRD Pro. The rear bumpers here you can see have integrated steps in them. There's a, a nice little area here with their LED reverse lights. This one here also has the tow package and Toyota does offer an accessory where you can have like a little kick plate here to kind of help you get into the bed. Now in terms of the actual bed, to every Tundra will come with a remote access to the bed where you can push a button on the fob, it'll make the bed pop down. You can see the tailgate is also damped, but if you're looking for some of those features in competitors like, you know, Ford has, uh, or Ram has with the multi-pro tailgate, same thing with GM. Ford also offers like that Empower Pro generator system. Toyota doesn't offer that. Instead, you can either get a spray-in bed liner or a drop-in bed liner. And you can see the bed is very usable. They've definitely increased the length and the width of the bed. Toyota says they wanted to keep the bed simple yet familiar, yet also bring it up into today's theme. You have LED lighting in here. You have these nice little cargo tie-down hooks. And they also give you a uh, 100 or 400 watt AC 120 volt inverter in here. But if you're looking for something like what Ford may offer, what GM may offer, or what Ram may offer, Toyota says that's not coming. 
but you can see the bed is going to be extremely usable for most people. And you can carry a maximum of 1,940 pounds, which is about 300 pounds more versus the previous generation. And I almost forgot to mention, there is a really cool party trip that no other competitor has. There's a little release here on the side in case you guys wanna open up the bed. So let's finally take a look at the all new interior of this Tundra. Now, I wanna show you guys primarily this TRD Pro because, I mean, look at the combination, the white exterior with this gorgeous red leather. It's really nice to see Toyota taking risk here and giving us an interior that feels a lot more premium versus the previous generation. Now, first getting in and shutting the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is an all new platform. It has a new frame. It's got these hydraulic cab mounts, which Toyota says is an industry first. And you can see here's the key fob for the vehicle. It's their newer key fob system. And you can even tell it's a hybrid because it has the blue accented Toyota uh, emblem on the actual key fob. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to turn the vehicle on completely, uh, but we'll go ahead and start, start it up. Now, you can see there that 12 inch product, 12.3 inch productivity screen shows you a different, I guess, area. Toyota said they had five different national parks built into the system, and it, it does that every time you turn the vehicle on and off. So again, I'll turn the car off and I'll turn it back on again. You'll see it shows you a different park. So that's a really cool feature and the graphics look amazing. I knew Toyota could do this. The previous gen was so behind. In fact, their tech in general was so behind and this truck seriously leap forwards them past 15 years. So you can really see that huge difference here. Now, of course, now, now getting inside the truck, let's talk about the interior materials. Now I wanna mention this truck is a very early prototype version. So there's gonna be some features in here that aren't quite production ready. Toyota was very quick to uh, point that out. So some of the trim you might see here isn't the full final spec of the truck, but it's regardless, it's still a really nice interior. Obviously you're gonna notice this massive 14 inch touchscreen. A base, the base system is gonna be eight inches. This is Toyota's all new interface. They, toy, they call it Toyota Audio Multimedia. It's part of their Toyota Connected Services. It was developed here by a separate team in Plano, Texas, and it has over the air updates. It's got all new graphics. It's really quick to respond. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay. This is the first Toyota, of course, to get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And you can see the screen takes up the entire real estate here. This is the same screen that I showed you in the new Lexus NX, which I had very little time with. So again, I'll be driving this truck next month where I'll be able to show you how the system works uh, out in the real world. But again, this is really very impressive massive screen, great resolution and graphics. When you put the truck into reverse, you can see there's a full 360 camera that it gives you with amazing graphic and quality. And you can also use all the different camera modes to help with towing. Toyota says it has this a trailer feature where it helps you back up your boat into an, a boat ramp where it keeps the trailer steady so you don't look like one of those people who can't back your boat down the boat ramp. So again, those are all features that I think truck buyers are gonna like. And you also have this massive 12.3 inch productivity screen here which Toyota says is slightly customizable. You can see when I switch between the drive modes here, you can see there's a sport normal and an eco. That's the, this is the first Tundra to also get that. It shows you that cool graphic, although the tack doesn't look like it actually changes. And Toyota says you can't put the map display in here. Um, and you can also basically just adjust a couple of things here. You can see the graphic, I'm waiting for that to go away. Uh, the car is not on, but you can see I can adjust this screen here to the left. I can put you know, a compass, your audio information, your settings and whatnot, and then there's a warning system there. Uh, so it is slightly changeable, uh, but it's not going to have the full customizable features that you might find in some competitors where you can't put the map display over here. In terms of the rest of the interior, you can see the TRD Pro has this soft touch material here on this dash. Uh, I'll show you guys a different trim while you can see the wood trim. This portion here is hard touch plastic. I also like how Toyota spells out their name right there. I believe it's only on the Pro version. Again, and you can see the center console here is massive. There's a lot of storage here, which is what you expect in a lot of trucks. Uh, you can see your wireless phone charger is right there. It allows the phone to be within easy reach. Uh, you have the shifter here that controls the 10 speed automatic. You have uh, different uh, buttons here where you can adjust the stability control. It now has a rear locker, which uh, is included on the Pro. And you also have features like multi-terrain select and crawl control. That was surprisingly not on the old TRD Pro, but Toyota has finally added it here. You can see there's a, a switch here, electronic switch for the four wheel drive system where you have a two high, four high, and of course a four low. We'll talk about this, of course, when I finally drive the truck. You have dual zone climate control here. You have heated and cooled seats, which the old truck had that, uh, but again, the buttons just feel very high quality, very nice to use. And you can see here, going back to the Toyota interface, this is where all your different audio sources is, your phone information is here, vehicle settings or vehicle information, and then there's your actual settings. The truck also has uh, adjustable ambient lighting, and surprisingly, what is missing here is like a dedicated home page. Like you basically have all your different uh, widgets over here and then you can basically choose what you want it to show. Like there's GPS, there's audio, and then most of you will probably just have it on the CarPlay feature. 
Uh, but I'm surprised there's no home button here or home page um, like what you have over here. Again, most of you will probably have it on the screen. Toyota says it just wasn't necessary because of the interface here, but it does include over the air updates. So it's something you could add uh, later on, or at least Toyota could add later on. Now, in terms of the center console here, you can see there's this really nice area here where you can lift this up, where you could put stuff in here, maybe like keys, maybe just some loose change. Ignore the materials, so they feel a little bit cheap because this is an early prototype. There's also a sliding little area here where you can open this up and you can kind of reach for something like sunglasses and whatnot. You've got uh, several USB ports in here and then you can also lift this up entirely to reveal a pretty good amount of storage. Although I, I will say some of its competitors offer a little more storage. Like I probably couldn't fit a laptop as easily in here. Uh, but maybe Toyota has different center console options. You still have plenty of storage in this truck, which is what you really expect. Now, in terms of the seats, I also like the seat comfort in this TRD Pro. These are now based on limited grades. So you have upgraded leather with the soft text. This is actually their soft text material. You've got the TRD Pro uh, embossed on the actual seat back. And then you can see here the glove compartment. It's a little bit on the small side. It's not a bin style, but you can see uh, it does provide additional storage. And then if you look over here on the ceiling, there's now, of course, full LED lighting in the cabin. And uh, the Crew Max models will be available with a massive panoramic sunroof, which is something that buyers demand. And you can see uh, on other models, I'll have to show you a, a different trim. You can also get a digital rear view mirror, which this one here is lacking. Now, before my short ass gets into the back seat, I wanna show you guys a feature that Toyota decided to carry over from the previous generation. The switch is back here. And this is a feature that owners really loved. It's the power rear window. So when you push this switch, the entire glass slides down or rolls down, and it's a feature that you find on other Toyota products. No other competitor does that, and it's great that Toyota decided to carry this feature over because apparently owners really love it. Now, of course, let's take a look at the Crew Max back seat because this is the back seat that's going to be one of the largest in the segment. Now, first of all, the door opens up pretty wide. I don't have final figures yet in terms of the legroom, but you can see here it's pretty class competitive with what you find in the the biggest cabs in all of its domestic rivals and including the Nissan Titan. This one here is not the hybrid, so the battery pack lives underneath the rear seat. Because it doesn't have that, the rear seat itself gives you some storage underneath here. If you guys don't have, or if you guys go for the hybrid, that storage is eliminated because that's where the nickel metal hydride battery pack uh, lives. And you can see this limited grade has a gray uh, soft text leather interior. Now getting back here, you can see there is a pretty good amount of space back here. Now I'm gonna crawl over here to the other side because you can see this is a very wide truck so you can easily fit three people across. And uh, in terms of you know, features back here, you can see the limited includes these rear seat air vents. You have two USB charging ports, an actual power outlet. And you can see there's an open area here because on the highest grades of the Tundra, Toyota will offer heated and ventilated seats and their own set of climate controls. So this one here does not have it, but you can now get heated and ventilated seats even in the second row. So that's a great feature to have. Above me, you can see this massive panoramic sunroof is included on this trim as an option. It's only available on the Crew Max, lets in a lot of light. So again, it's a feature we couldn't get before. And if you guys are audiophiles, the premium upgraded system is JBL. It offers up to 12 speakers, which I haven't had a chance to really hear how it sounds. However, you should notate that some competitors offer 18, 19, even 20 speakers. So I'll wait to hear how I actually hear how it sounds, but the back seat is definitely still usable. You have a folding down armrest here with two cup holders and the seat back also folds down or you can lift it up on the non-hybrid versions uh, to give you more space back here. So with an all new truck and an all new platform, you're probably wondering what's powering the new Tundra. Well, for those of you who really liked the old 5.7 liter V8, I'm sad to report that it has been discontinued. It was a thirsty engine, even though it was very quick for its time. Instead, we have the same engine from the Lexus LS 500. So it's the company's new 3.5 liter twin turbocharged direct injection V6. That's right, Toyota is taking the same playbook from Ford here with their EcoBoost engine and now putting a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Technically, it's a 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 because the displacement is 3445 cc's and if you're rounding up properly it's really a 3.4 now the numbers are very impressive 389 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque now if you're keeping score that's roughly uh nine more horsepower or eight more horsepower versus the old v8 and roughly 71 more pound feet of torque so we have more horsepower more torque and toyota is also promising significantly better mpgs now if you're also keeping score between ford this has slightly less horsepower about 11 horsepower less versus the EcoBoost twin turbo V6 in the F-150. Now all the power goes out through either through a one choice only, a 10 speed automatic transmission. This is a Toyota design transmission. And you can take your pick between either 
rear or four wheel drive. This one here is the four wheel drive option. All tundras will tow a maximum or maximum towing capacity is about 12,000 pounds. Max payload is about 1,940 pounds. Now Toyota did not disclose any performance figures just yet. They also didn't disclose any fuel economy or curb weight. We'll know that as we get closer to the on sale date. For those of you who want more, Toyota does offer an option for you. So Toyota says the standard V6 certainly is anything but a base engine, but for buyers who want a little bit more, you can also choose this model here. This has the iForce Max. It's the twin turbo V6 that's from the base engine, but the Max portion indicates that this is a hybrid. It's a full hybrid system, just like Ford's Power Boost in the F-150. No, this is not a plug-in hybrid, so it doesn't give you any all electric range on its own. And in fact, it even uses a 288 volt nickel metal hydride battery, which kind of surprised me. Toyota actually claims it uses a nickel metal hydride battery for longevity and for the fact that it's available. It's a little hard to get lithium ion right now. Now the numbers in the iForce Max are very impressive. Toyota says you get 437 horsepower. That's a lot of power and for the record that's seven more horsepower than what you're going to get in the F-150 Power Boost. So bam, Toyota got a little bit more numbers there. And the torque number is also very impressive. 589 pound-feet of torque. Nearly 600 pound-feet of torque in this truck and that's over 100 more than the base engine. So this is going to have a lot of power. I'll be very interested of course to drive this model. Now it all goes out through the same 10-speed automatic transmission. Um, it has been tuned, of course, for efficiency, for smoothness. Uh, it's a Toyota design transmission, and they don't have final fuel economy figures just yet, but they did claim that this will get the better gas mileage versus the standard engine, which, of course, it should. It's a hybrid. The number to beat is the F-150 hybrid, which gets 24 MPG combined. If Toyota doesn't match that or at least beat it, I'm hoping they come very, very close to that. Now, in terms of the towing, this will still tow a maximum of 12,000 pounds, and it'll haul a maximum of uh, 1,940 pounds in the bed. And Toyota doesn't have final curb weight figures just yet, but they did claim that they took out some weight versus the old truck. However, they also put that weight back in because of the new powertrains. So Toyota had seven different trucks for us to see here at this very exclusive first look from the 1794 all the way down to the base or the Baser SR5 trim. My favorite color is probably this one here. This is the TRD Pro in Solar Octane. It's a really cool orange color, which is pretty similar to their Inferno. I really like how Toyota is definitely giving us some bold colors, especially on the TRD Pro model with the wheels, with the uh, technical uh, material here that you find on the fender flares. It's a really good looking truck that looks a lot better in person versus in the photos. Now, speaking of which, if you guys are probably asking the million dollar question, how much is this truck gonna cost and when is it going to be available? Well, Toyota hasn't announced final pricing just yet. Obviously, these are very, very early prototype models. However, uh, they did say that production of this truck, which will be built here, or built in San Antonio, Texas, will begin in November. And they you can expect the truck to show up at your local dealers by December. So by the end of the year, technically it's going to beat a couple of other new trucks to the market, specifically the Ford F-150 Lightning, which should have the largest touchscreen in the industry. Until that truck comes out, Toyota is going to have that bold uh, bragging right, of course, with their 14 inch screen. But really, I'm super impressed. We've waited a long time for Toyota to give us an all new Tundra and they've delivered. They delivered great new powertrains, bold new styling, and imp a huge improvement on the interior and the luxury and the technology department. And really it's gonna come down to the price because the current Tundra is around $34,000 for the base version. They go up to around the mid $50,000 range for a TRD Pro. This new truck here, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. We don't know how much more expensive, but just keep in mind, a lot of its competitors can easily touch $70,000 when they're fully loaded. And I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised to see Toyota come pretty close to that number. Now, some of you also are probably wondering, what about a plug-in hybrid, what about a full electric version? Toyota obviously won't disclose future product information, but I did have them say that this platform here is designed to handle, of course, full electrification. So don't be surprised to see a full electric version of this truck show up in the next coming years, depending on market demand. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Toyota Tundra. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.